Okay, so as I stated, um, and I'm going to reorient this, this um, thing here. Um, we are going to now elaborate this model to have output of data to a file. We have been accumulating data within this very model that we, uh, that we had previously created, this sort of sim simple model, idealized model of heart disease and smoking. And we will now modify it so that the data that we were accumulating, data that's been accumulating in these data sets on a monthly basis, is output to a file. Um, and specifically, we're going to output the current smoking. I'd shown you before how to do this manually. And just to remind you of that important skill, you know, if you, if you go run this model and, and we were to, to run it with, with um, you know, speed it up and so on, um, I could pause it at any time. I could click on this data set. That's current heart disease. I could cl click on the smokers data set. Here we go. And I could copy this and I could, how did I do that? I did it here. So how did I get this thing up? I clicked on the data set and I could go into Excel. Here we go. There we go. And um, no, I don't want to mumble. Um, okay. And I can paste it in and, and the world is good. Um, alternatively, I could scroll down here. I could right click on oops, sorry, this, and I could paste the data from this chart in. All that is fine. All that is not, all that is good. But I often want to output this automatically. Let's output it. Let's output it. Okay. So, what am I going to do? First of all, I'm going to, just for convenience, I'm going to have this run for a fixed length of time. And specifically, I'm going to have it stop at a specified time. I wanted to show you this, and now I am showing you this. I'm going to have it stop at time, sure, 100 years, sure, 100, because one means years here. Why do we know that? Because the model was created with time unit years. Okay. So I changed it. Oh, I'm going to call this version 15. Here we go. Boom. Version 15, done. Okay. Um, so um, uh, I stopped it. And now at the time that it finishes, I want an event to fire. I've long disliked, and maybe Wade knows a better way to do this, um, um, uh, but I've, I've long wished that you could set an event whose characteristic was run this event code run this event, fire this event, when the model is done, finished running. Unfortunately, you can't do that, to the best of my knowledge. Um, what you can do is set it to go off at a specified time, unless Wade, in his wisdom, you know, is familiar with a, um, a method to, in fact, set it to fire at the final time. So I'm going to set an event, which will be called you know, export event. Um, Final time export event, export event. When I have things in my model, I don't like people guessing what they are. You know, kind of thing. Hey, what, how would you do it? Yeah. I know you can go put code in those places. I want to squirrel it away, but yes, be fine. Uh, the occurrence time, right? Occurrence time? The monthly reporting? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the, here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you? Okay. Now, ain't that? Oh, yes. There you are. Darn right. Now, you, you're saying to get stop time? Okay. So, it, what is it? This dot get engine to get stop time? Get engine, no, 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 there's no auto, oh, yes, there is, okay. Uh, get stop time, get stop date, get stop time, here it is. 
Okay, boom. And there we go. A thing of beauty and a joy forever. The triumph of Wade McDonald. Okay, um, so um, let it be known all throughout the world. Um, so the occurrence time of this, of this event, it will fire at the stop time. When this model is created, we'll figure out what the stop time is for this scenario, and it will set this event to go off. By the way, what if there were no stop time? It would be infinite? Yeah, okay. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we set this event and that's beautiful because if I go change the stop time, I don't have to go change it here as well. Okay, great. So now we have an action. And now the question is, mm -mm, what are we gonna put in that action? Okay, here we go. So um, we are going to go and we're going to create a text file object, okay? Um, and uh, we're going to create this ahead of time. This is, to the best of my knowledge, this is an obligatory thing. Wade may know a, a better way to do this too, um, which wouldn't surprise me at all. But um, I think this is more or less an obligatory fashion um, that you have to pre-create a text file to be written so it can find it. It's kind of a pain, but we have to do it. And so. Fine, fine, fine. We'll go create a text file. I'm going to go into Excel. I'm going to create a new sheet, Control N, and I'm going to do file, save as, and I'm going to put in my documents, for lack of a better place, I'm going to put in a, um, and I'm going to call it, um, uh, you know, uh, model export, and uh, it's going to be a tab file, text file here, tab delimited. And I can, okay, I'm going to call it model export dot tab. I'm putting it in some place. Note where that place is. Okay, note where that place is. Wait, do you know any way to to avoid doing this? Ahead of time? Okay, I doubt that you had to. Do. You're quite sure you don't? Okay, that would be awesome. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to create it, but we'll, um, yeah, let's keep on using it. Yes, that happened. Happy. Okay, fine. Okay, so I created it, but we may have happy news that we didn't have to do it. Fine, I'm gonna close Excel. I don't have to worry about this anymore, fine. So I created an empty file. My notes suggest you had to do it when I created these tutorials back in 2015. It may have been the case, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so, Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to the connectivity palette, connectivity, and you'll notice there's a thing called text file there. Do you see that? There's also Excel files and databases. We can draw information to, from, and write to text files, databases, Excel files. I'm going to show you the text file. Just these days, you know, with, with R, you know, Exchanging data in text files is very common and, and for good reason. It can be easily looked at and easily sent via mail and easily compared. And, and so I'm just going to, and I'm going to call this text file text output file. It's, a, it's an output file, it's a text file. Hmm? There it is. And what Wade is saying is that we could actually. See, wait, I want to point this to something that doesn't exist yet. And I think that's going to be the, the problem. You know, like, normally, I'd, I'd want to say, go create it here with this name. And I, I thought it requires me to, OK, I thought it requires, OK. 
so yeah, I want to avoid the character. Yeah, it's trade off. Yeah, or you write a line of code. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so yeah, pick your point. Um, so I'm going to pick this one that I created. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying for a code free solution. Um, or nearly code free. There is going to be a little bit, a wee bit of code anyway, and rate is correct. Yeah, you could, you'll put that in. Okay, so I'm selecting this file, and this does avoid us having to go sort of mess with it. By the way, it's interesting that it didn't put its name. I'm curious. It, 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 we selected it, um, and I don't know why it. Okay. Tab. Okay, so let's do it as TXT. Let's think in TXT. Okay, I was choosing between tab and TXT anyway, and and going back and forth. Fine, I'll do it. I'll I'll go and create it as a TXT. And here we go. And it's I'm going to make it. Uh, what did I what did I call it? Who, who can tell me what did I call it? Model export. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a, a tab file, and it's gonna be called model export dot txt. Yeah. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Um, yes, I want to keep using. It. Yes, I want to place. It. Boom. Don't save. Boom. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. And so now I can point it at it. Now it will hopefully give it a name. And uh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. That's what I wanted to avoid you having to type to. Dollar sign for the code. Okay. Fine. So we pointed this to our file to which we want it to write. I changed this to write. Okay. This is writing. We're writing to this file. Okay, what character set to choose to avoid commas in one? Well, this is a tab delimited file. So um, commas are not going to bother us. Um, uh, but uh, I, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I think it's going to render all numbers without commas. I don't think. Right, it's it's yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it's it's it, it won't be a character set issue with comma. And, and, yeah. Okay, so we just set this. Now we have this sort of thing to manipulate it. And wait is right. I mean, you have to write some some types of of code. And and so I'm going to put something here anyway. And and it's true that I could set the name of the file here, and maybe that wouldn't be. I wanted to avoid. Okay, great. Um, so I am going to do the following. I will say text. So this is the action for this event that I created earlier. It's an event that goes off at the stop time. Text output file dot print ln. So it's going to print something out. Okay. Um, and this is what I'm going to print. I'm going to actually, I'm not going to do print that. I'm going to do print, and I'm going to put the name of the data set, current smokers data set. Okay. Um, and uh, data set, data set. And I can do autocomplete, make sure I named it properly. Autocomplete is your print. It'll prevent, it'll print misspelling. And, um, that is it. You could have done this to a text file, but this is a single line and it ain't too bad. No plus, no must. But you did have to create that file up front. Otherwise, you'd have a, a line of code where you'd say what the target is. Okay. Um, so 
that's how you write to a text file. Let's run it. Can we run it? And we'll see. Okay, here we go. So build, make sure it's a happy camper. Who needs TA help? The TA sit ready, ready for deployment. Who wants TA? Okay. Either that means there's no TA help needed or people are beyond TA help. Okay. Around the bend. Okay. Um, so I'm running this and I'm going to run it as quickly as possible and time moves on and empires rise and fall and a hundred years roll on and, and it, it formed a hundred years. That's good. And I'm going to stop it, boom. And I'm going to close it, boom. I really should have put in a little thing that said, I'm writing to the file here. So I could have known, but I didn't. Let's go see if we could find that file with Excel. I'm back to Excel land. I'm gonna say open and I'm gonna say, this isn't a very nice thing, but it's this model export. And it says, what do I do? And I'm gonna say, yeah, it's a, it's a delimited file like comma or tab. Um, oh, maybe this is what um, Sung Drew was asking about. Um, I'm gonna say started import and I'm gonna use a tab as the, thing to import it. You see that tab delimiter. Okay. And um and uh there's no date format. There it is. There it is. So there's our data. Um right there. Now you notice that it didn't start at time zero. Anyone want to hazard a guess why? It's because this data set had limited capacity. This data set had capacity of a thousand samples, and it needed more than a thousand samples to um, to cover it. So, a uh, hundred years will be twelve hundred samples, right? twelve months per year, et cetera. So, I could have set this to a thousand, ten thousand latest samples, and and then I would pause it that it's going to be able to do it um, correctly. So let's, uh, it'll be able to do all of them. So I'm going to run it again, here we go. And uh, we go, boom. Um, so, so come on, boom. And, and it runs again and it's going to output it. And I will say stop, boom. And I will close it, boom. And I will go into Excel and say Excel, there we go, boom. And I will say no, and I will open it and it will go through the same process. And I will say happy and there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, it imported the data set. Ladies and gentlemen, the experiment was a complete success, okay? Okay. Um, okay. So, so what did I do? Big picture here. What did I do to export this file? I did roughly four things. Number one, I went and I created an event to go off. Excuse me, to go off at the end time. Um, and I gave it some code to print out this data set, okay? And this little bit of code was key. I set it to go off at the final, the model, when the model finishes through the waves, arch version. Step one. Step two, I created this text file. Excuse me, I, I actually, before this, um, with forethought, I went to Excel and I saved an uh, empty file to go there so I could easily point to it. And it needed to be a text file for it to show it here. Um, so I think it would have worked fine pointing to a tab, but it's kind of disconcerting. It doesn't show it. So I went and I, I pointed it to this text file. And it's going to be overwritten. That's what this write is. It's going to write to it. I had to set it to write. That was two. Number three, I went and I 
created this this output file and I pointed it to it and I said to do it right. And number four, I ran it and it out exported it um, uh, to there. And I ran it for full length. I stopped the model and it exported. Yeah. Um, so that's it. It exported the file from the data set. So we've seen how we can export files from data sets. If you're wondering, could I have a file with more than one column with different data? Yes, first of all, the data set could hold two columns of things. Right now it held time and the value, but we could have had two sets of measurements instead. Um, if you wanted to export a bunch more in different columns, I would suggest exporting to um, an Excel file. Um, there's many ways you could do it, but exporting to the Excel file, you can kind of easily do that. Or you could manually go through each thing each time and, and print out the corresponding values there and put it in the text file. But here we're dumping the text file to this data set, which is very simple. Okay, okay with that? So persistently exporting data. Yes, Wade. Uh-huh. Okay, well, that's interesting. Oh, 317 more items. Yes, I am. Okay, so that is interesting. Um, so, okay, so let, let's go figure out what's going on. I, I have one hypothesis, this is due to some sort of length. So I'm gonna run this for 75 years. I'm gonna run it for for a shorter time, right? 317 things is, is less than 30 years uh, of data. So I'll do it for, for 70 years. Um, sure, 70 years. I'm gonna run it for 70 years instead of 100 years. And I'm gonna see if it puts that at the end. My hypothesis is that maybe it only exports a certain amount. That's annoying if it's true, but... Um, I'm, I'm interested in Wade's insight. Oh, look at that. Couldn't, oh, it's being, it's open in Excel. That's why. Okay, go close it. Boom, close. No doubt flex spot. Okay, so now we'll run it again. There we go. Time is moving on. Okay, here we go. Boom, boom. Okay, it is done. Let's go close it. Um, boom, let's go open Excel and let's see if that is there now. Okay, um, so again, my hypothesis is that this is due to some sort of maximum limit or something, but let's, let's just go test if it always puts it there. I'm gonna go down to the bottom, no, okay. So 70 years is just fine. Um, so I'm wondering if there's some maximum amount that it can, put out or what have you. So we'll have to look into that, right? Yeah, yeah. So good call, Sarah, good call. Um, so it may be that for doing it longer than that, um, not getting any output. So the question would be, is the, is the text output file, the object pointing to the file? Like, is it finding the file here, Sanju? And is it set to write? We'll check both of those. Um, both of those could be show stop. If it neither points to it, or if it doesn't say write to it, um, it, it's not going to put it out. The other thing which could block it is if you have the text file, if you have the Excel file open while it's trying to write it, it will be unhappy. So um, you will want to close Excel while you run it, so that it can write to it without Excel blocking it from writing to it. If Excel has it open, it will jealously guard it and prevent it from being written to it. It was jealous, thanks, yeah, yeah. It, Excel's jealousy is a familiar function. Um, okay, great. So I'll put to a data set, I'll put of a data set to a file. Okay. Um, 
great. Um, so that was file output. Um, we've covered a whole swack of things that I wanted to cover. There is one final thing I want to cover, but I think it can be done in 10 minutes. Um, it was a hierarchical model. I have a, a whole model hierarchy we could build. And I'd be glad to do so. Um, but incubator projects are also urgent. And finally, this is the last day of the boot camp formally. So what I could do is offer these. Okay, I think the comp compromise is I'm going to offer that lecture tomorrow um, and record it. And you know, I'll I'll offer it, I'll pick a time. Um, I'll inform everyone of that time. And if people want to come watch it live and ask questions, they're welcome to do so, follow along. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, you know, be recorded and we could have them. Okay. So, hierarchical model, which is pretty cool, actually, um, going to take a while. But I want to offer some closing comments from Bootcamp, and I want to get the incubator projects really going again because we have some ground to cover before the end of the incubator tomorrow. So um, I think what I'll do, and I'm, I'm, I'm watching the time, it's at 425 right now. I think what I'll do is, is stop the sharing here. Um, and 